Hey guys, welcome back to another Q&A session. Every Sunday on the channel, I read some questions that you guys leave me in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. They can be about DayZ, the channel, my personal life, anything like that. I'll do my best to accommodate as many questions as I possibly can in about 10 minutes or so. So let's get started. First question comes from Young Easy. How do you get your Daisy to look so good? I put mine on high quality and it looks bad and laggy. I'll include a link to my 0.59 Daisy settings video. A lot of people are like, Deadly, why don't you do one for 0.60? Honestly, they're exactly the same. The settings haven't changed with Daisy. The only thing that has changed is the rendering engine. So if you go to that video, you should be okay. Follow the instructions on the configuration file. And if not, I'll try to remember to include an imager link to my Daisy settings in the description box below of this video. Next question comes from Tejas Deep. Can you tell me about COD Infinite Warfare or any reviews on it? Unfortunately, man, I am not going to be picking up Infinite Warfare. It does not look appealing to me at all. If there was, if I bought it, it would be just because the Call of Duty 4 Remastered Edition looks so good. That is a game that I actually really love to play. I think most people enjoyed Call of Duty 4. So if that game just came out on its own and I could buy it standalone, I probably would. But Infinite Warfare doesn't look good at all. I don't. I think it's going to be probably a low point for the Call of Duty series and it's one that I will personally be passing on. Next question comes from E. Kizzy. How many hours do you have in DayZ? I got 3,700 hours in DayZ, I think. Keep in mind, I've been playing this game a lot since release in December 2013, and it's basically my job. I stream every single day at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, five hours a day, 40 hours a week, and I also make videos for the game. So let's just say I play this game a lot and it's a pretty big part of my life. Next question comes from Clean Sweep Gaming. Have you ever heard of the game Planet Side 2? Yep, I played that game a hell of a lot. I probably put nearly 500 hours into that game or more. I was a really big Planet Side player. And if you're wondering what faction I mainly played on, it was the Vanu. Um, however, I haven't really played that game in probably like two and a half years or so. I know a lot has changed in that game, but it is a really fun free to play game. And if you're looking for a shooter and you don't have a whole lot of money, that is definitely one of the better ones to choose. Next question comes from Pepe Medina. Can you make a Daisy slash miscreated comparison video? Probably not. I think Daisy and miscreated are both great games. They're both in the survival MMO genre, but that is about as much that they have in common. The way that the looting system works, the health system, the zombies, the mutants, the vehicles, the base building, uh, the server capacity, uh, the environments, it's just so vast that everything would have to be compared and there's absolutely no crossover. Um, doesn't mean that I don't like miscreated, but I just prefer Daisy. Next question comes from Will Spence. Have you ever thought about making videos on Daisy RP or other RP servers? Well, I actually play on Daisy Underground almost every single day, and that is an organic roleplay server. That means that encounters are encouraged, but they're not forced. So if you want to go out and just do PvP at the Northwest Airfield or Michigan Military Base, you can. But if you want to create a story for yourself, develop a group of survivors, maybe even join a faction on Daisy uh, US, you can do that. So you get the best of both worlds without any metagaming or any rules in between. So I'll probably be sticking with the servers that I enjoy right now, and I just don't think I'll be going to Daisy Underground, or sorry, Daisy RP anytime soon. Next comment comes from Briz, and I really do like this comment, but it's a long one, so buckle up. So hold on, did you just say that regular Joe players that play every day shouldn't be invited to participate in the Survivor games? You Twitch and YouTube content creators should just get a free pass into the finals, no questions asked. I'm sure there are better players than you and other content creators that play every single day, but don't stream or make videos. I like you, but that comment got under my skin. I think you're on a bit of a high horse. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it sounded like to me. Okay, I'll do my best to answer this question as unbiased as possible. Regular Joe players have really never been able to participate in the Survivor Games, and that sucks. There's no competitive esport or ladder ranking for Survivor Games or team battles. Everybody who's participated in a qualifier or the actual Survivor Games themselves have Twitch and YouTube channels for marketing purposes for the game. The whole point, unfortunately, the whole point around the Survivor Games is a marketing push for DayZ. I hate to say it, 
but that's basically it. So unless you have some sort of reach on a YouTube channel or Twitch channel, the chances of you getting into the Survivor games is not very high. However, down the road, I would like to think that with like Battle Royale mods and Survivor games mods, uh, that ladders will be introduced and high skilled players will be able to be ranked and those people will become sort of pseudo famous inside the community and therefore invited into the Survivor Games. So now that we've established that the Survivor Games is not an esport, it's a marketing event that uses Twitch streamers and YouTube creators to push the game and promote the game through Twitch, how are we going to move it towards an esport? First, there's going to have to be a standardized playing area through a mod like Battle Royale that makes sure that the playing field is equal for everybody, so competitiveness is encouraged. Just like King of the Hill or King of the Kill in H1Z1, everybody knows everyone's in the same map, you can do multiple events as much as you want, uh, and there's a ladder system that is either tracked in-game or through a website. Now using that ladder data, they could do multiple qualifying events and ultimately have a final Survivor Games based on information from the ladder, not Twitch channels, not YouTube channels, just the ladder system. And that ladder system will probably create famous players who will most likely eventually stream their progress on Twitch. And we've seen this happen through King of the Kill on H1Z1, players that just play the game for fun, figure out that they're amazing at the game, and then start streaming the game, build a massive following, and now they're some of the most watched H1Z1 players in the world. Using a mod too, you wouldn't have to rely on people to stream the game in order to watch their progress. That's another thing too, guys. Like one of the reasons why they only choose Twitch streamers is so they can actually watch their perspective. It's a really cheap way of doing it. There's really no built-in way of watching another streamer's first-person perspective in Daisy right now. So unless you have a computer that can stream, they can't watch your perspective, which is very important for entertainment purposes as well. And I hope that answers your question, Briz. I never meant to insult anybody. I just want to tell it how it is. It's really not an event that's open to everybody to participate in, unfortunately. And it's important to remember, it's not an esport or a competitive event. It's a marketing event for the game using Twitch and using people's social media presence to push and market the game. Um, but I would love to see a competitive esport survival game in the Daisy universe very soon. Next question comes from Blaze Inc. Deadly, are you ever going to give out the server you're playing on? Then I mean like an event. Love your videos, they're great. Every week we do Derp Squad on my Twitch channel at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Saturday mornings. Uh, if you are a subscriber to my Twitch channel, then you are welcome to join us at any point in time of the stream. Um, when it comes to giving out my server information during my broadcasts, I can't do that for stream sniping, hacking, obtaining my GUID reasons. So I sort of keep my server to myself. Um, and I do sometimes, very rarely, like every couple months, do viewer events uh, to get everybody on a particular server and just mess around. Next question comes from Sam Atkinson. Deadly, here's a question for next week. Would you ever do a charity stream, for example, for cancer research? I believe we could raise some good money and if we reach $250, you could shave your beard. I would love to see that. Uh, yes, charity streams will be happening in the future. I don't have any scheduled events yet, but I'm definitely looking in the future to be doing those uh, down the road, especially like 12 or 24 hour streams for charity, uh, for sure. Right now, I'm just trying to build a stable financial base for the broadcast and this YouTube channel and I haven't reached that yet so that is my ultimate goal and once there's any surplus we'll definitely be doing charity streams. Next question comes from PK2 Life. Hey Deli, do you see yourself changing your play style once base building will be out? Would you be building a big base and collecting all the loot from the PvP fights or will you focus on raiding other people's bases? Love your videos. Probably neither. Um, the bases or quote-unquote stashes that I build are very small and sporadic and spread around maps. I won't be building a massive epoch tower. If I do that, it's going to just be for fun. Um, the bigger you build your base, the bigger target it is, and we still don't know how easy it will be to break into your base. The thing about bases, which are kind of, in my opinion, they've not really been done correctly anywhere because I think nobody knows exactly how to do them. It's kind of a tough question. Do you make the bases really easy to break into? 
making all the progress people do on those bases irrelevant? Or do you make them like fortresses, making everybody hoard gear inside them and making it a little too overpowered for a survival game? Me personally, I'm sort of stuck in the middle, so I'll probably just stick to building small little camps and stashes uh, that are hidden rather than building big camps that are well defended. There was over 77 questions and I wasn't able to get to them all, obviously, this week. But some of the questions were awesome and I wanted to take some time to really explain them because sometimes I might, I'm not a wordsmith, so I might say things that I don't necessarily mean. So I am more than happy to uh, reinforce either an opinion that I have or correct myself if I'm wrong. And I think I did that in this video and I hope I did. I never really want to insult anybody. I don't have any issues with anyone. And obviously I don't want to hold myself uh, to a higher standard compared to other Daisy players. That's just not fair. And there's a lot of big community members out there that aren't streamers and aren't YouTubers. And I hope I address that in this video. So guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button. Uh, and if you guys want to watch my daily live streams, they're every single morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And a link to that is in the description box below.